Hey, how's it going everybody? So you may or may not have uh, already gotten your brand new Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. And if you have, you're probably enjoying it already. I shared my first 10 things to do when you get your Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra uh, video yesterday. Here's about 20 more tips and tricks you could use. And you know, there are a ton of these tips and tricks videos online for these phones. And you may or may not get anything out of them depending on how long you've been using Samsung Galaxy phones. But hey, if you're like me, you like watching them anyway. Either you learn something new or maybe you're reminded of something that you forgot about. So let's get started here. And the first tip I am going to show you is hiding apps. Now, there may be an app on your home screen or in your app drawer that you do not want people to see. And there's an easy way to hide that and then make it reappear when it's safe, for lack of a better term. So I swiped up here and let's say I wanna hide the calculator app. All I have to do is tap and hold on the home screen, tap on home screen settings and go down to hide apps. Here I've got a list of apps, all my apps. And all you have to do is select the ones you wanna hide. I just selected calculator. I'm gonna to go to done and then swipe up to the home screen. And when I swipe up now, you see the calculator is gone. So it's that simple. And when you wanna unhide it, you just go back, home screen settings, hide apps, and take calculator out of there. Now, when you make the app reappear, it might send it to the back of the app drawer. It may not be exactly where it was. So you may have to dig through, but once you unhide it, you'll be able to find it. Number two, and this might be an overlooked one that some people just deal with for some reason. I don't know why, but just change your screen timeout. I think 30 seconds is a little bit low. Some people like that. Some people are fine with it. But a lot of times I observe that the people who say they're okay with that just kind of let it dim and consistently have to tap on their screen. I like to set it at one minute, but my point is you can change that. So, but my point is you can change that. So let's go into settings and go to display and then scroll down to screen timeout. Now, I like to set mine to one minute. Out of the box, it's on 30 seconds. But like I said, one minute, even two minutes makes sense. 30 seconds, I think, is really, really low. I mean, you've got to be on some really low battery, I think, to, to deal with 15 seconds. But just set it to whatever you feel like is a consistent amount of time in which you can look at the display without having to tap on the screen all the time to keep it on. Number three is swiping down for your quick panel. Now out of the box in One UI, let me go into the home screen settings here. I tap and hold on the home screen. And you see this setting here, swipe down for notification panel, that's off by default. So when you first get your phone, you swipe up and it goes to your app drawer. You swipe down and it goes to your app drawer. So tap and hold on the home screen, go to home screen settings, and then toggle on swipe down for notification panel. I think this is a lot more useful. Now when you swipe up, you still go to your app drawer, but this time when you swipe down, you get your quick panel. Number four is screen recorder. Now this was a feature that was long overdue in Samsung Galaxy phones. Of course, you could always download third-party screen recorders, but now it is built in. You just swipe down on the quick panel and you should see a shortcut for it somewhere here. And if you don't have it, then you can just tap here on these three buttons, go to button order and it'll appear somewhere and you can drag it in but here's screen recorder. So if I tap that, allow the permissions and you can choose whether to record your screen with no sound, with just the media sounds from whatever app you're using or those media sounds and your mic. So you can be speaking over the screen recording. And then if I start recording here, you see I've got these controls up here. It's recording. You've got a little timer up here to let you know how long it's been recording and you can stop and pause, etc. So I'm just gonna stop this recording here. Now you can customize some of these settings. Of course, the video automatically saves to your gallery, but if I go to screen recorder, if I tap and hold, then I can mess with some of the settings here. If you want to record yourself, you've got a little thumbnail size here for your selfie video and you can change the video quality and of course the previous settings that I showed you about which audio to keep in that recording or not. Number five is alternate look for your face unlock. 
Now, if you use a face unlock on these phones, you may have to be wearing a mask or your sunglasses or you wear a hat, what have you. But if you go into settings and you go into biometrics and security and you go to your face recognition, you can add an alternative look here. It says enhanced face recognition by adding an alternative appearance. You just tap on that and it will ask you if you wear glasses, for example, follow the directions and you can add an alternative look for face unlock to recognize you a little bit more easily and efficiently. Staying in biometrics and security, go back to fingerprints. And one tip I like to use is to register the same finger or thumb multiple times to make the ultrasonic fingerprint reader more efficient and to have it more quickly recognize my fingerprints. So what I did is I added my right thumb twice and my left thumb twice. Now, if you want, you could just add each one once, but trust me, it's going to work a little bit better and a little bit faster if you register both prints twice. Now, you only have a limit of four prints that you can add. So if you need to add somebody else's prints or if you wanted to add more than just the two thumbs, then you might not be able to add both thumbs, obviously, twice each. The next thing I wanna show you is dual messenger. So if you've got WhatsApp or maybe Telegram or even Snapchat, you can add two instances of that in case you have, let's say, a work account and a personal account. So if you just go into settings and search for dual messenger here, I just searched the word dual and you have it here. So dual messenger will allow you to add two instances of those same messaging accounts. For example, I added WhatsApp a second time, I added Telegram a second time, and now if I wanna add Snapchat a second time, I just toggle that on. It'll ask me if I wanna install a second copy of Snapchat, and there you have it. So in your app drawer, you're going to find a second copy of Snapchat. It'll have this little orange symbol on the bottom right, and that lets you know that that is the dual version of Snapchat, not the original one that you had installed. So the next thing I wanna show you is the split screen view. You can open and browse two apps at once. So let's say I want to open the Play Store and let's say I also need to do some quick things on the calendar. I don't know, a bit of an odd combination here, but all I have to do is swipe up and go to either of those two apps I want to open in split screen, tap on the icon, open in split screen view, and then go to the other app I want to open and boom, they're open at the same time and you can adjust how much of each app is showing. Let's say I only needed a little bit of the calendar to see what day it is and I can browse the Play Store on the bottom. The next thing I wanted to show you is a trick that I find very, very useful because of how much I love dark mode. Now let's say some apps are not provisioned for dark mode just yet. So you've got dark mode turned on on your phone and some apps are in dark mode and some don't have it yet. Well, there's a solution for that. It's not perfect, but it works surprisingly well. Go down to settings, go to about phone, tap on software information, and then just keep tapping on the build number until you're a developer. You, you, I don't know if you caught the messages down there. It said to tap a few more times and then you're in developer mode. Put in your pattern or your pin and developer mode has been turned on. So now when you go back to your, I didn't wanna show you my IMEI, go back to your regular settings. You see these developer options suddenly enabled on the bottom. And within these, you can force dark mode to be on. So uh, let's see here. It might take me a while to find it. It's probably easiest to just search up here. So I'm gonna search force dark. There it is, force dark mode. You toggle that on and all of a sudden apps that don't have a dark mode will open in dark mode. Again, like I said, it's not 100%. It'll work for Amazon. It'll work for eBay. It'll work for the Weather Channel. It'll work for Tinder. It's not gonna work for Snapchat, for example. But now when I open up, let's say the Weather Channel, it's now gonna open in a dark mode. As you know, this background is otherwise white. There is no dark mode yet from the Weather Channel app on Android, but now you've got it. So for dark mode in developer options, a great tool. So this next tip is a bit of a niche tip, but it will help you if you're traveling. Let's say you are overseas and you would like to still make and receive phone calls, but do not want to pay those international fees for making those calls. You know that you've got to have Wi-Fi calling on, but if the Wi-Fi signal is not very strong, then it's going to switch to the cellular network. And if it does that, then you incur those fees. So I'm gonna show you how to make sure that you're only making a Wi-Fi call and if the Wi-Fi network is not strong enough, 
it's not gonna switch to the cellular network. You either have a strong enough Wi-Fi network and make the call, or you don't. So, first thing you're gonna wanna do is go into airplane mode. So, uh, swipe down on your quick panel, go to airplane mode, and then swipe down again, and then turn on your Wi-Fi after you've turned on airplane mode, and then swipe to Wi-Fi calling, which I have here, and then press and hold, turn on your Wi-Fi calling, and then switch to Wi-Fi preferred. So now you're in airplane mode, so you're not getting any uh, network signal, you're not using any mobile data, anything like that. However, you've got Wi-Fi calling on uh, and your Wi-Fi is turned on. So if the Wi-Fi signal is strong enough, you're going to be able to make and receive those calls. If it's not, you're not. But you don't have to worry about it switching to the cellular network and incurring those associated fees. Next up is the GoodLock app, and you can download this from the Galaxy Store, and it lets you make a number of customizations to your phone. My favorite app within GoodLock is QuickStar. So you can use QuickStar to customize the colors and customize transparency. And it works really nice in tandem with dark mode. So if I press and hold on here and, and edit this one that I have here, it shows you you can change the on color of these buttons, change the off color. You see I have a dark gray for that. The font color of the labels here and the background transparency. I've got mine set to 95% and how much of a blur effect you want in there, etc. So I have this all set. So based on these settings here, you see if I swipe down on the quick panel, you see that I've got these colors here as I have them set in good lock. And you also see that there is a blur and transparency effect. Let me show you on the home screen here. You can see more of it. You see how it starts to blur. And if I swipe down on here, you see those effects taking place. So it's pretty nice to me. It just looks nicer than the plain black that you otherwise would get when you swipe down in dark mode. So Good Lock is a very useful app to have. And also within Good Lock, my second favorite app within here is the Home Up app, which allows you to make a number of other customizations. So when I go into Home Up, tap on home screen here, for example, I was able to hide the icon labels. And this might not be a big deal to some people, but aesthetically speaking, I like it better when there's no icon label. All I need is the icon itself. So I toggled that on. And then when, when I show you my home screen here, you can see that there are no labels on the icons. Next thing I wanna talk about here is the keyboards. Now on this unlocked US version, Microsoft SwiftKey is built in. I don't know if it's the same with the carrier versions and I prefer SwiftKey anyway. I know a lot of people prefer uh, Gboard, for example, and Gboard's great, but time after time, I noticed that the word prediction is just better uh, and smarter on SwiftKey. Now, SwiftKey, again, is now built in. I was gonna have you download it in case you wanted that as an option, but go to settings, scroll down to general management, within general management, tap language and keyboard, and then on-screen keyboard. And you've got your choices there, the built-in Samsung keyboard. And like I said, in this unlocked model, Microsoft SwiftKey was also built in, and that's the one that I prefer. So my tip for you, if you want the best text prediction, if that's the number one most important thing for you in a keyboard, then I suggest switching it to Microsoft SwiftKey. And within SwiftKey, of course, there's plenty of different themes and you can customize how you wish. So your choice between Gboard, the Samsung keyboard, Microsoft SwiftKey, of course. But for me, SwiftKey is a better experience overall. And I'm not saying that one of them is right and one of them's the best over the other. Look, everybody will use what they prefer for me, Text prediction, word prediction is king, and Microsoft SwiftKey does that the best. Next thing I wanna show you is how to make this 120 hertz display and the improved Samsung animations even smoother by reducing animation speeds. So, since we've already enabled developer options when we forced dark mode, go back into the developer options, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, until you see window animation scale. So turn that to either 1.5 or two times. I'm gonna go to two times, and then the transition animation scale, I'm also gonna switch to two times. And then suddenly the phone just seems smoother to me. The, the transitions, the animations are smoother. They are a little bit less quick, 
and your apps will open up in the exact same speed. It's just that the transition effects are going to be uh, a, a little bit smoother. And with that 120 hertz display, it's just gonna look so buttery as if there's absolutely no lag at all, no processing time needed. Next thing to do, go back into settings and let's go into display and go down to the navigation bar. Now, when you set swipe gestures as your navigation, of course you've got the buttons and you've got the swipe gestures, gesture hints is going to be on by default and you see the gesture hint pop up here. Now, if you like that, that's cool. But the problem with that is that in many apps, you're gonna see a line, a colored line here that takes away from the amount of space that the app could potentially be opened in. For example, in Google Messages, if I tap on Google Messages here, since I have gesture hints on, you see that white bar up here, here as I'm composing a text message? Well, if you take gesture hints off, the gestures work the exact same way, but you don't have to deal with that in some apps. So I definitely suggest that you remove gesture hints. So we go back into settings, I remove gesture hints. And then now when I go back to Google Messages, it is gone as I'm composing this message. Now there's only one hint that even shows up here with gesture hints and you already know how to use that or you'll get used to that quickly. And I don't think there's any need or use for those hints. And especially if you wanna make full use of the display, you don't want that thin white line in some apps, just remove gesture hints. Now the next thing I wanna show you, let's go back into settings and search here and let's type show battery percentage. Out of the box here, show battery percentage is turned off. So all you get is this little icon here, which shows you roughly how much battery life you have left. I like to have an exact percentage and know exactly how much juice I have left. If you're like me, then tap on show battery percentage. And while we're in here, the next hint is out of the box. Again, show notification icons. It's set to show the three most recent. So you'll have three icons up here. And if you have more notifications, there'll be a small white dot to let you know that there are more than three. I'd like to have all of them up here. I'd like to know what notifications I have from any app. So I switch it to all notifications. So again, out of the box, this is set to three most recent and show battery percentage is toggled off. You wanna go into settings, search show battery percentage, toggle that on and while you're in here, go to all notifications instead of three most recent. Next hint, now these are some pretty big phones and some people might have trouble navigating this thing one-handed. Some people may not mind having to navigate it two-handed, but if you would like to kind of reduce the size of everything on the screen so that you can navigate with one hand, go into your settings, type search, and just type one-handed mode. As you see, I had it typed there, one hand, one handed, there it is, one handed mode. And toggle that on. And then now if you've got gesture navigation on, when you swipe down in the center of the bottom edge of the screen, one-handed mode turns on. So let's see how that works here. Let's go home. And if I do this, there you have it. One-handed mode is on. So very, very simple. You saw what I did there. Exactly how it instructed me to. I swipe down from the bottom center edge of the screen. And then uh, this way now I can just navigate through my home screen. And if I am left-handed and would rather it on this side, I can do it that way. And then when I'm done, just tap anywhere and it'll go back to full screen. Next tip for you, let's say you're doing something, showing somebody something on the screen and they want you to hand them the phone. You don't want them snooping around and messing around. So first what you have to do is go into settings and I want you to start typing pin and you see pin windows, go there, toggle pin windows on. So next go to your recent apps. Let's go to the Play Store as we were saying and tap on the icon and tap pin this app. So. People now cannot go around and check out your other apps. They can't swipe to your home screen, etc. They are stuck in this specific app. Now, once they hand the phone back off to you, you can turn this off by simply swiping up and holding, and then it takes you to your home screen and then face unlock, uh, lock, unlocked me and got me back into the phone. The app is no longer pinned. Next tip for you, swipe down on your quick panel, swipe down here, tap these three dots here and go to quick panel layout. Now by default, show brightness on top is not there. And when it's not toggled on, when you swipe down, you can't adjust your brightness. Now, even if your brightness is on automatic, there are gonna be times I'm telling you, for example, in the dark, when you're in bed where 
you feel like it's too dim or too dark and you just want to adjust it temporarily. You're going to have to swipe down a second time to get to your brightness. So to avoid having to do that, again, go to the quick panel layout and toggle on show brightness on top. Now, all I have to do is swipe down once to get to my brightness. And the final tip I want to share with you guys is the brand new nearby share feature that has been coming to certain Google and Galaxy phones. It makes sharing files very quick and easy. There are of course a million ways to share a file, some quicker than others, but this is the quickest way I've found so far between Galaxy smartphones. So let's say I want to share a photo or a video. All I have to do is make sure both phones have nearby share turned on. Now you can find that in the quick panel. If it's not there, then tap these three dots and go to button order and you'll be able to find it. So nearby share, swipe, and there it is, nearby share. Now I go to my S20 over here, swipe down, and I'll turn on nearby share here as well, nearby share. So it's on in both places now. So let me go to my gallery here. Let's say I wanted to share one of these screen recording videos. I can just go into here and tap on share and nearby share shows up as an option. So I'm gonna to go to nearby share. This phone is gonna show up. I'm gonna tap on that. It's gonna connect. It'll say a device is sharing and I have to accept. And just like that, very, very quickly, this 30 second video shared and boom, best way to share files between Galaxy devices and some other Google Android smartphones. And that's that, 20 tips and tricks that you can utilize with your brand new Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra or really any modern Galaxy smartphone. If you notice, I didn't include any S Pen tips and tricks because I wanna make a separate video about that. But hopefully you got something out of this video. If you did and you like videos like this, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. That way you let YouTube know that you like videos like that and they can show you more videos of this type in your feed. I hope you're all staying happy and healthy and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Thank you.